Uh, in today's lesson, I'm going to be covering a two-dimensional conservation of momentum problem. Uh, and this implies that one or both of the objects that are colliding with one another is colliding at some angle. And so that's what makes it different than a one-dimensional problem. Okay, So our problem that we're going to be covering today, uh, we have a 20-gram ball of clay is traveling east at 2 meters per second it collides with a 30 gram ball of clay traveling 30 degrees south of west at 1 meters per second and we want to know what are the speed and direction of the resulting 50 gram blob of clay uh, so that implies that this is an inelastic collision the two objects are going to come together and form one object and so uh, in any problem uh, conservation momentum problem the first step that we should take is to draw a before and after picture of what's actually happening. And we know that before and after are going to equal one another. Um, that's what the conservation of momentum states. So beforehand, we have our 20 gram ball of clay traveling east. And I'm just gonna label that 20. And then we have our 30 gram ball of clay is traveling 30 degrees south of west. And so that's gonna look something like this, where our angle measurement of 30 degrees is right here. That's our angle theta, right there, okay? And so then our after picture is that because they're balls of clay, uh, that they come together and they stick to, with, with one another. And so we get our 50 gram ball of clay, um, but we don't really know at this point where it's going to be traveling. That's why the question asks, what direction? Right? So that's step one, draw the picture. Now step two is we're going to draw, I'm sorry, we're going to come up with our equation for our before and after. Uh, since we're working with momentum, each individual object here has momentum, and we know that momentum is mass times velocity. And so we, beforehand, we have two separate objects that have their own momentum. So the mass and velocity of the 20 gram plus mass and velocity of the 30 gram is gonna equal, over here we only have one object. So there's only one momentum, the mass and velocity of the 50 gram ball. So this is our basic equation. However, with a two dimensional problem, we have to take this basic equation and break it into its x and y components. Okay, And so for our x and y equations, it's going to be the same. mv of the 20 plus mv of the 30 equals mv of the 50. Same thing for our y. mv plus mv equals mv. And then the idea here is that uh, we're going to know the before so that we can solve for these afters, x and y. Then we'll make an x and y, those two vectors, to make a triangle in which we can solve for the total momentum of the 50 gram ball of clay. All right. So our next step is to start basically plugging in the values of solving for these two equations. Um, before we do that though, we need to actually know what is the momentum of these two objects. Okay, so at this point, our ball that's traveling east, it's going to have a momentum of, and I'm going to convert to kilograms here, uh, 0.02 times uh, 2 meters per second. So we have a momentum of 0.04 newton seconds and then our other object our 30 gram ball is traveling this way it has a mass of 0.03 and a velocity of 1 meters per second so it has a total momentum of 0.03 newton seconds all right well the nice thing is this object that's traveling east only has an x direction. So this 0.04 basically takes the place 
of this value right here. Okay, and because it has no y component, this basically becomes zero. So we'll get to that in just a second. But our other object, this 30 gram mass and velocity, it is angled. So what that means is we have to solve for its x and y components. And so we have to break that vector into its x and y components. We know that this angle right here is our 30 degrees. And so we can just use basic trigonometry to solve for the x and y components. Our vector, our basically this vector right here, we already said was 0.03. So to solve for x, we're going to be using cosine of 30 would equal x over 0.03. So our x value of its mass and velocity comes out to be negative because it is going towards the left negative 0.026 and then our y value is just going to be the sine of 30 is equal to y over 0.3 so our y value is going to come out to be, because it's traveling in the negative y direction, is going to be negative 0.015. All right. And so now that we have basically all of our values, as mentioned, we're going to um, start plugging these values into these equations. Okay, and so I'm going to do that in... I'll do that in red. So for our x, the mass and velocity of the 20 gram, its momentum we said was 0.04. So its mass and velocity is 0.04. And the x component of the 30 gram we said was negative 0.026. So we're going to subtract 0.026. That's going to equal 0.014. So we know that the mass and velocity of the x component is 0.014. Now we're going to do the same thing for the y. Well, this is traveling, this first 20 gram ball is traveling completely east. There's no y component, so that becomes 0. And we solve for the y component of the other object to be negative 0.015. So we're going to subtract. 0.015, that's going to give us negative 0.015. Now, these two, va these two momentums here, we can come up with vectors for them, meaning the collision afterwards, the 50 gram ball has an x component momentum of 0.014 and a y momentum component of negative 0.015. So we're just going to represent that in vectors. So we get a x component, 0.014, and a negative y component of 0.015. And so we can solve for its total momentum. We can find this resultant vector right here. And the way we would do that is use Pythagorean theorem. So 0.014 squared plus 0.015 squared equals c squared. I did the math. c in this case uh, comes out to be 0 0.021. And remember, these are momentum vectors. So that is our total momentum of the 50 gram ball. We need to, though, find the speed of that ball. So if we know that the momentum is 0 0.021, and we know that momentum equals mass times velocity, 
we know what the mass is, we can solve for the velocity. So 0 0.021 equals our 50 grams, which is 0 0.50 kilograms, times velocity. We will divide by 050. So our velocity, our speed, comes out to be 0 0.41 meters per second. That was only half the problem. The other half is solving for the, the direction. Well, we know that this is the direction. We are basically asking to solve for what is theta. Uh, once again, we can use our inverse trig to do this. We, we know all three points at this part, but if we didn't know what the hypotenuse was, we could still use our x and y components, just use the tangent tangent inverse tangent function which is opposite over adjacent so our inverse tangent is going to equal 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.014 when we plug this into the calculator we get 47 degrees and this is south of east Here's our east, and we know we went downwards. So south of east, 47 degrees south of east. OK. So hopefully, using this as an example problem, you'll be able to solve for your own two-dimensional uh, conservation of momentum problems. Just remember that the only difference is you have an angled vector so you have to break it into its x and y components thank you for watching